Notre Dame basketball is back. It's a beautiful day, a very snowy Thursday afternoon. Notre Dame basketball versus Loyola Academy. I'm here with Aiden Nelson and Danny Berg. Hey, Caden. Good Hello. to see you all. <laughs> nice to be back. And uh, I don't think you see too many Thursday matinee <laughs> actions but i know uh coach allegretti who's watching from home he's pretty pleased about that you're welcome for the shout out by the way now your wife isn't going to harass me um but hey we got a great matchup today this is uh always a fantastic game year in and year out and it's nice to have this game back in Notre Dame with fans in the stands yeah i mean as most people probably have heard game got moved to three o'clock so as you said afternoon game and this game was fun last year hosted at loyola went into overtime and he ends up Ends up winning 48-44. That was a great game. I yeah, love that. Nice. That was awesome. That was an awesome game. Yeah, that was definitely a close game last year for sure. And it was, I mean, like Caden said, super, super exciting. And uh, it's also nice to see, you know, large student section, especially with the time move up from seven. Yep. It's nice to see <laughs> a lot of guys still make it out here. And, yeah, so now we'll go into our conference check-in, our current standings. For the ESCC, we see Notre Dame in the bottom three with a record of one and three. A lot of teams fluctuating around in the top half of this uh, of the of these rankings. With Bennett still undefeated, five and zero. Oh, Marist four and one. St. Pat's four and one. And then we see pretty even. We see it to even out with St. Vider, Marion Catholic, and Nazareth all three and three. Yeah, what's been quite interesting is we're starting to see the separation of the pack that I think we were all expecting by this point in the season. Mayor's dream of an undefeated season finally came to an end when St. Pat's defeated them last weekend. And it, they're still very tight up at the top, and Mayor's can get some revenge when they head up to Curlin Court next month. But this conference is, as always, really strong. And then over in the Chicago Catholic League, it's pretty strong up and down. There's still four undefeated teams. Loyola was undefeated in conference play up until they played Mount Carmel on Tuesday where they got absolutely blown out looking for a bounce back today. Yeah, and I mean, you could see in the ESCC, there are three teams that are 3-3. Three and three. This is a conference that can jump around back and forth with placings. And same thing in the Chicago Catholic League. There's a lot of undefeated teams here, and it's a question of which teams are going to stay undefeated and which teams are going to fall off, kind of drop a little bit. Yeah, just kind of going off of that. Still fairly early into the season with four, five or six games played so far in conference for most of these teams, so I expect them to stay the same throughout. As we go to our next uh, next graphic here, we have the last four games for each team. Notre Dame not doing so hot. We see a loss to Marist on December 6th. That's probably the the um, furthest game that most people can remember after that. Before that is a little little too far. Beat Carmel 51-43. Andy versus Bennett 68-35. And then Notre Dame had just won their... Uh, their last home game, 56-49 to 49 against Northridge. Yeah, and it was the 1,000th win for the ND basketball oh, yeah, program. Big, big awesome milestone achievement. there. Yeah. And Coach Clancy's 100th win as the head coach here, so two pretty big accomplishments there. And then over on that Loyola side, they're skidding right now. They've lost three in a row. They lost a non-conference, two non-conference games in a row, uh, one by 10 to St. Pat's, and then a sort of a rivalry game against Evanston on a last-second shot. They lost by two points. And then, as we said just a minute ago, thrashed by Mount Carmel two days ago. So they're really trying to get back on the right foot before uh, their holiday tournament next week. Yeah, I mean, we saw ND get blown up by Bennett, and then they had a nice bounce-back game, was able to beat Northridge. And this is going to be the same type of game for Loyola here. They just had a big loss against Mount Carmel. We're going to see if they can do what ND did, come back, get a nice one. Yeah, and you may have heard of the ND Big Three in the past, but we have a new Big Three. <laughs> so we see Jan Connor and Brady Selhurst all kind of stepping up, playing the roles that they were expected to play with some big numbers. You see Jan putting up 26 points against Jones. Connor Moselle, 22 against Carmel. Brady Sellers with 20, 16. So they're all putting up the numbers that we expected them to at the beginning of the season. Yeah, Brady Sellers has uh, lived as advertised. Uh, he's one of the top sophomores in the state for a reason. Uh, uh, Illinois Hoop Prospects ranked him. I think it was number 11 in the preseason, and he's shown that. Just dropped 20 points on Northridge in their last game, and he's been a huge add. And then Connor Moselle and Jan Kutu, they've really started to take on that load. Jan was kind of a sixth man last year, while Connor was a starter, and they've really both flourished together. Yeah, both these guys seniors, you know, last year, and they definitely came out and wanted to perform here. You know, both of them given the opportunity, well, Jan given the opportunity to start this year instead of coming off the bench, and 
he's definitely shown that he's capable to fill that role. And as we move into the next four games for both teams, we see Notre Dame a couple conference games, actually all conference games now that I look at it, <laughs> and um, Loyola with some, other, with some more big games, and these are, including this game tonight, Notre Dame versus Loyola, these next four and five games are going to be big for both of these teams. Yeah, they're really going to start to make a break as to how the seeding goes for state playoffs, and that always big one down there in that bottom right corner, the Jesuit Cup, mm -hmm. it's getting played at Loyola this year. At Loy I believe it's at Loyola Academy, if I'm, if I'm mis not mistaken, or it's at Loyola University. <laughs> Whenever I looked at it, I just saw it was at Loyola. So I'm going to guess it's at the high school, but that's always a really competitive game year in and year out. It's probably one of the most fun games that you see in the Chicago Catholic League. Yeah, and kind of going back to what we said earlier, you know, these are the games going to make or break seasons. If you see some teams go off on a huge run here, they can kind of throw themselves back into contention for some high seeds. Or you could see some teams like Lilla maybe continue to skid a little bit over the next couple games, and that'll just drop them be the farther down. And we see the Christmas break bash. Um, yeah, there's, there's Wheeling the Hardwood one. Classic tournament coming up as we have about a minute 40 until our PA announcer, Mr. Mike Morisi, will come on. So we'll try to get through these next couple slides quickly. We see the Wheeling Hardwood Classic schedule, tournament schedule, and we see Wheeling versus Notre Dame. Yeah, that's kind of the big one there, and there's... Oh, look at that. We got a buzzer. <laughs> I guess we'll worry about that a little bit more later. Oh, well. I guess we're going to go and get started. How about we send things downstairs? Yeah. Come <laughs> 
And we are about to get things underway here at the Don Doman Niles. Aiden, what do you have to say before the game starts? I mean, I'm just really excited right now. I know that this is going to be a nice, close game like it was last year. And I'm just excited to see how this one's going to turn out. I am too. The tip-off is about to start here. Bit of a change of commentators today. I'll be taking Danny's spot as a play-by-play. -play. I'll be taking your spot. <laughs> yeah. Notre Dame wins the tip off after a couple tips around. We see Lee Mingles in the backcourt. Leo Federico on the wing. Don's kind of just dribbling around looking for someone to get open, get a free shot here. And yeah, we don't expect to see too much too early in the game. May start off slow, a lot of passing. Open shots is what they're trying to find. Jan in the corner, takes the shot, drains it. Yeah, and we see a very, very, very loud student section tonight. <laughs> Every little thing, they're cheering, going wild. I mean, yeah, they said it was supposed to be six inches of snow or something today, and we got a packed house. Oliver Bishop with the layup. A little bit of contact, no good going up. And a foul is called on number three, Oliver Bishop. Yeah, we see Leo Frederigo there at the defense. I mean, that's just great hands up, staying his ground. And then Jan comes through, gets that rebound. Yeah, and he's been in foul trouble the past two games. Been getting into foul trouble early in the game, I should say, for the past two games. So I think that's one of their goals today is to stay out of that. Is It's bobbled around the corner by Ingles, and it will now be loyal the ball. Yeah, that was one thing we kind of saw at the Bennett game. Last, uh, the last game that we did is uh, they had a lot of turnovers, just a lot yeah. of bad passes. A little bit of movement at the top of the key. Tarjan up for the layup, no good. Gets his own rebound. Out to Bishop. Back out to the top. Down into the paint. And it's good, number 21, Brendan Loftus. With a nice little floater to tie it up at two to two. Yeah, it kind of goes over Connor Moselle there and just puts a nice little touch on it. Federigo taking it to the house. Offensive foul call. Frederigo with his first foul of the game. Comes off of a drive. I like the aggressiveness though. Yeah, that's one thing that we didn't see a lot from ND was they didn't really drive much into the paint. They kind of just passed around looking for shots around the arc, but it looks like Leo is going to be going for some easy two point layups. Here. Yeah, looking for a little contact as number 21 Loftus is wide open under the basket for the easy two. Ingles brings the ball up, passes it out to Moselle on the wing. Looking for something open. Frederica comes up. Moselle working his way around, back out to Ingles on the wing. Kutu in the corner, takes it in the paint, nothing there. And back out to the wing. A lot of passing like you said before. Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to swing the ball, see if they can get a shot in the corner. Nothing there as the ball goes back into the corner. Dribbled all the way around. And a lot more passing still going on. Lozell directing traffic. Selhurst comes up, nothing open. Frederigo at the top of the key. Kutu for the three. Just long. Bolin taking it up. As there's a wild pass there, but Loyola recovers it. So there's a three-pointer. No good. Rebound. ND after a little bit of <laughs> iffiness on that on that rebound. Yeah, you got Brady kind of tipping around a little bit, couldn't get a good grip, but Moselle's able to come down with it. So there's Kutu at the top of the 
Top of the key. Back out to Ingles. Looking for something open. Back out to the wing. Nothing's open. So it gets stolen by number 25. Alex Engro takes it himself and is good. Yeah, Faisal, a little bit of contact there from Lee Ingles. He just goes up with it and is able to get the two points. Yeah, and we've seen Engro for Loyola so far being very aggressive on defense. So that puts the Ramblers up 6-2. to two. Just over, just under three and a half minutes, I should say. Sorry. It looks like there's a jump ball, and there's another steal from Engro. And absolutely rejected by Moselle. Ramblers trying to recover as there's a little bit more passing out at the top of the key. Bishop to Loftus, to Tarjan. And a wide open layup is missed by Bishop right under the basket, gives Endy a fast break. Yeah, Moselle on the wing. Endy's trying to push this here, they tried to at the beginning, trying to see if they can maybe break this ice of just passing the ball around. And not much open as there's Moselle for the three, recovered by Loyola. And like I was trying to say, not much has been going on for the Don so far. Tarjan takes it himself, another missed layup as it gets tipped out. Bowen finds Tarjan in the corner. Then a Loftus in the in the paint. No good on the on the hook shot. Notre Dame another chance to push the ball, and they kind of lose it there as they slow it down. Looks like there's a, going to be a foul called on number 11, Miles Bowen gets. Called for that one. Just under two minutes left here to play in the first quarter. Ramblers, Ramblers lead six to two. Yeah, and what we've seen in this first quarter is just a lot of defense. Neither mm -hmm. team's really given up too many points here. and It's gonna be one of those games where three points feels like a lot. We see Rory Robbins check in for Ingles. Was in the corner. Tipped away, but recovered by Selhurst. Looks like it might have been a double dribble or a carry. Couldn't necessarily see what the official call was. And the Ramblers will get it back again off of another turnover from ND. Yeah, it's one thing that they're trying to work on is just keeping the ball in their possession more. No travel call. There's a three in the corner. Another it's missed no three. And, I mean, that's something we've been seeing. That's two or three missed threes now from the Ramblers. All their points have been two-pointers. And we've seen a lot of missed opportunities for the Ramblers that the Dons get possession of but end up not doing anything with it. Is there... Looks like there's going to be a foul. Number two, Andrew Hollerich. Puts Loyola up to three fouls here in this first half. Yeah, it's a lot of fouls here by Loyola. Andy's been doing a much better job of, you know, trying not to commit as many fouls and only have one, but it's not that bad. We see Moselle take it out himself at the top of the key into the corner to Jan, and another foul is called. Looks like it might be on number four, P.J. Hayes. That is what's going to be called on. It's going to be number four, P.J. Hayes. Both teams not playing at the top of their game as there's been a lot of to turnovers and a lot of fouls called. Selhurst at the top of the key. Pump fake. Out to the corner to Rory Robbins for three. Looked like Behind it got the there. As Engro has it here with the final 35 seconds left. Passing it back and forth between Miles Boland. As 
They start to run their play with about 23 seconds. Never mind. <laughs> now they start to run their play with about 15 seconds. Yeah, they're definitely just holding on to the ball here, trying to get the last second shot before the quarter ends. The layup and the foul. Number 25, Alex Engro with the end one with 2.7 seconds left here in the first quarter. I mean, that was just, he just went straight through him right to the basket and was able to get two. Chance at three here now. He knew he had to do something with the time running out, saw the open lane and took it. Jan tries to put up a shot at the end. 8-2 to two is the score at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back in a few minutes. We are back underway in the second quarter. Loyola leads eight to two, and as Aiden was saying during the break, student section is packed for this snowy night. Yeah, you know, you expect six inches of snow, you know. Don't expect a lot of people. Game time had to get moved up. Some people had plans, but apparently they made way, and it's probably the largest student section we've seen all year. Yeah, I love to see it as Loyola gets the first ball, and there's a steal by Ryder Rea. Just read it off of his fingertips perfectly. Kutu on the wing, pass back to Robbins. Moselle in the paint, looks for a foul call, no foul call, but Jan puts it back up after getting the rebound. Yeah, great hustle play there to get a rebound, put that shot back up, get some nice points. Yeah, we see Don's trying to draw a lot of fouls whenever they go to the rim. Yeah, it's something that I think they're seeing Loyola do this game. We're trying to recreate it. As the mid-range from Miles Bolin misses, comes up short. Robbins now pushing the ball up the court. Moselle on the wing. Selhurst in the corner. Takes it himself. Looks for anything open as there's not much there. Calling out the plays. Yeah, you see a lot of these ND guys kind of hold on to the ball around the three-point line, kind of moving their hands around, directing people. Another foul is going to be called on number two, Andrew Hollerich. It's going to put them up to five fouls, I believe. There's a lot of, lot of fouls here by Loyola. Mm -hmm. That'll put the Dons in bonus soon, not quite yet. And I mean, this is something Dons going to have to take advantage of. Assuming they get the bonus, uh, they're going to have to make a lot of those free throws, and yeah. that'll really help them out. Especially early in the game, it will definitely be helpful. Was on the wing. Madurea yes. might have had an illegal screen there. Dons are now up to three fouls. Olin takes it up slowly up the court, trying to drain as much clock while they have the lead. Takes it himself, and Bolin takes it to the rim. Yeah, it's kind of been the story for Loyola. Just a lot of driving to the basket and getting easy layups. 
Yeah, it seems like whoever's on defense in the paint just might not be there as Jan passes it to Rhea, bobbles it. Gets it out to Jan on the wing. Tries to take it himself, nothing there. Back to Kutu in the corner. Ingles for three. Bounces off the rim as Moselle plays good defense but gets called for a foul. Now Don's starting to get high in the foul number two and we've been stressing this a lot just because like we said before earlier in the game that Don's have been not too good with their foul troubles. They start to give the other team the bonus very early in the game which you know is not hopeful for them. Yeah, they, they started out nice and strong in the first quarter with only one or two fouls, and then now they're starting to let it slip with only you know more than five minutes to go in the second. Bowen tries to drive right, and there's nothing there. Takes it back out. The pass down into the paint. Out to the corner for three. It's good. Oliver Bishop with the three after a nice pass. Number 25, Alex Engro. And the Dons have not been able to get Another long range shot going, only four points right now. We're gonna need to see a lot more, you know, long balls from her if we're gonna see them win. Sellers in the corner, looks for the three, comes up short. Engro takes the ball up for Loyola, and he is taking his time. And I expect to see that a little bit more with Loyola having a sufficient lead. They're not gonna try to push anything too fast. They're not gonna move the ball too quickly. They're gonna take as much time as possible. Tarjan down in the paint. Travel called on Jimmy Tarjan, number 23. So that's one of the few turnovers so far from Loyola. Still on the wing looking for anything, passes it out to the corner to Selhurst. Kutu on the other wing, trying to get open. Ingles looking for a pass, finds Kutu on the wing. Selhurst takes it to the rim, no foul is, now a foul is called, a little bit of a late foul going up, but that will be a foul on number 21, Brendan Lof Loftus, Loftus, sorry. And Selhurst will go to the line for two. Yeah, and that's gonna look, that's gonna put ND, it's gonna give him a bonus here, so now four minutes left, any foul at all is gonna get ND some shots, and you know, down by nine, they're gonna need these. Yeah, it'll definitely be helpful going into the late minutes of this quarter as Selhurst misses the first. Deems himself with the second. 13 to five, Ramblers lead, and we see the Dons now with the full court press. Yeah, trying, to get think, in, trying to get a stop. I think they're trying to notice that, you know, they're all starting to take it slow, and they're trying to put pressure on him, make him go fast, make him make mistakes. So there's Bolin, gets blocked, going up for it as the Dons push it here. Kutu with the behind the back, takes it himself to the rim. No foul called. Loyola looking for something. Couldn't find anything. The corner for three, it's good! Bishop with another three! And it looks like there's going to be a timeout now. That was confusing. They're taking a 30 second timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds also.
We are back. The Ramblers lead the Don 16 to five with three minutes and 20 seconds left here in the second quarter. The Don's just trying to find something, just trying to get a bucket of any sort now. And it looks like there's gonna be a foul. Number 21 again, Brendan Loftus. That's gonna be a one and one for Connor Moselle. Yeah, and like we said before, these free throws are gonna be huge. If Connor, if Connor Moselle can make one or even both of these, it's gonna help out the Dons a lot. So there's a good hustle play from Carlito Collins there, but Like it might have been in over the back. Sorry, I'm not. I'm really not sure what that call was. Looked like an over the back foul is what it was called. Yeah, it looks like you need another shot here. It's like maybe one and one again. As Loyola now makes a sub number 35. Adam Doherty subbed in, standing at six seven. Be big help for Loyola in the paint. So the free throw is missed, and the Ramblers now have a shot to just run the clock out as much as possible before halftime. Up 11, they have no rush. Bishop takes it to the rim, and it's good. A good, aggressive layup from Bishop gets him the two points, puts them up 18 to 5. Yeah, we've seen Bishop now being able to hit down threes, and then right there he's able to drive and just put up points whenever he wants, it feels like. Ingles on the wing, looking for a pass back out to Kutu at the top of the key. Drives in, takes it himself. Offensive foul called. That was an aggressive, aggressive call <laughs> from the referee. I feel like every charge call ever has never <laughs> not been aggressive. I guess, I guess. That will be on Kutu for, to put the Dons up to five fouls. Engro directing traffic at the top of the key. Out to Tarjan. Engro on the wing. Mid-range jump shot. Just long. And Moselle comes up with the rebound. Rodrigo in the corner. Back to Jan in the corner. Back in the corner. Federico out to the top of the key. Jan to the corner for three. Just long. Seen a lot of missed threes from the Don, especially from both corners now. Wonder if they're gonna try and change the strategy a little bit. Yeah, possibly in the second half we see them trying to Get some more paint shots instead of behind behind the three-point line as we see Loyola trying to just get as many passes in. Just over a minute left here. To the corner. Bolin now has it at the wing. To Tarjan. In the paint, and that's taken away by Selhurst. Dons have to push it here. So there's no pass available for Ingles as he's trying to shift his way at the top of the key. Out to the corner, Kutu for three, it's good! Kutu ends the long scoring drought for the Dons. So there's just over 30 seconds left. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna see what, what Loyola did in the first quarter again. They're just gonna kinda hold on to the ball, pass back and forth, and just try and get the last shot. Boland and Engro passing it back and forth at the top of the top of the key in the wing. 15 seconds left. Engro starts his dribble, starts looking for the play. Takes it to the rim, and a foul is called, but the shot was not made. Number one, Liam Ingles will get penalized for that. Engro goes to the line, 
One second left. Loyola leads 18 to eight. Yeah, you question here, is it early enough in the game where you just make both shots and see if ND can get a miraculous one, two second shot off now? Uh, or do you just miss the first shot intentionally knowing that they're not gonna have enough time to get down the court? So it looks like they might be trying to put a little bit more time back on the clock. As it now goes up to two seconds. So far, the leading scorers for Loyola are number three, Oliver Bishop. We've seen a lot of aggressive plays from Engro and Miles Boland just being aggressive all around. They're kind of the power three for for Loyola right now where Endy can't seem to really get anything started. Seen a three from Kutu, couple drives, but you know, not, not really anything has been going in for Notre Dame as 1.8 seconds is the final verdict. It's the first free throw is made. Looks like we're gonna see a, a sub with 1.8 seconds left. <laughs> Ryan Fitzgerald comes in for Adam Doherty. Second free throw is made. Moselle with the half court shot. An absolute line drive. As Loyola leads 20 to eight going into halftime. The Don's got some work to do. We'll be back in the third quarter.
We are back in action here in the third quarter. Loyola leads 20 to eight. Aiden, what have you seen so far for both teams? Uh, I've seen a lot of passing and not a lot of shooting from Notre Dame's <laughs> side. And when they do shoot, it has not been falling for them. And from Loyola, we've seen a lot of driving, getting some easy buckets. And then we have seen Oliver Bishop, two three-pointers. Yeah, big players, big, big plays. We've seen that so far from Loyola. As Ingles takes it at the top of the key, trying to find someone to go. Q2 on the baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. And that would be Loyola ball. And a quick turnover from Notre Dame to start off the third quarter, just 15 seconds in. Yeah, that's not what you really want to <laughs> see there. You want to see a nice, good offensive possession, maybe put some points on the board as well, but definitely not how you want to start. There's a pass at the paint, gets tipped around. Corralled back at the top of the key. As there's a corner shot, number 11, Miles Bullen comes up a little short. Jan gets the rebound. Federico in the corner, finds somewhere to go, can't go anywhere. Ingles takes it back out, the, back out to the top, trying to regroup. Ingles in the corner, easy drive, and takes it to the rim. And honestly, I think that's the first time I've seen him do that all year. He's usually the guy who just kind of moderates everything, passes the ball around. It's a nice aggressive drive from Ingles there. Yeah, Liam Ingles has definitely been the type of player all year who's just, you know, brings the ball up, sure-handed point guard who's gonna get some mm -hmm. nice, like, smooth passes through. But he does a really good job there, finding a seam, taking advantage of it. You see Loyola passing her around now in the post. The three just comes up short from Bishop. Notre Dame on the fast break. Federico on the wing, passes it to Jan in the paint. Gets tipped at number 11. Miles Bullen will take it for the easy layup. So that puts Loyola back up by 12. Just two minutes in. Little bit of passing around at the top. Ingles can't do anything with it. Has to dribble it out. No travel called as he stumbles a little bit. Lazelle trying to make his way in. A lot of passing around. Ingles for three. It's good! William Ingles coming out of the second half. <laughs> Very hot right now. Out of nowhere, he decides. He, he, th he thinks to himself, you know what, I'm going to shoot today. And I'm going to make it. 22 to 13 is now the score. And Boland again with an easy layup. Just tips off the rim as Sellers with the fast break. Has nowhere to go with it. Federico looks like he... Federico looks like he may be injured, but they're going to play on for now. Travel is called. Yeah, we're seeing a sub come in. Ryder Rea for Leo Federico. He's going to go straight towards the trainer's room. Yeah, that can never be good, especially he's, looks like he's putting pressure on his shoulder, which is usually a sign of something not good. <laughs> As Ryder Rea will come in for Leo Federico. There's a steal from Engro right there as he takes it himself to the rim, leaves it short, and the rebound from Rhea just gets taken away by P.J. Hayes, just right out of his hands. It's gonna result in another easy layup for Loyola. Yeah, this half so far, they've been able to get a really good job of just getting to the basket. And one for Kutu as he decides to do a little shimmy in the paint and takes it himself. He has a chance for a three-point play. Kutu having an offensive night tonight. Contributing most of Endy's points as he comes up short on the free throw. Just under four and a half minutes left. And I'd already say the pace has picked up a lot more 
in this half than it has in the first. Yeah, first half is a lot of what we're seeing right now. It's a lot of passing around, trying to find open shots. But, you know, second half, we've seen a lot of, you know, driving to the rim, putting up points. Tarjan takes it out in the corner, passes it back to Engro. See, takes it to the rim and gets blocked. But a foul is called. And I think the entire gym is wondering about that one because that looked like he looked like Kutu just blocked that straight off the backboard and said, give me that. Yeah, we can definitely see the student section disagreeing with that one, along with many others in the gym. Engro will now go to the line for two. And makes the first one. Second one rims out, and Kutu comes up with the rebound. Don's down by 10 here in the third quarter. Kutu at the top of the key, decides to take it himself again, passes out to Rhea. Looks like there will be a foul on number 23, Jimmy Tarjan. The Don's will have it under the rim for an inbound play. And goes to Moselle in the corner. Nothing there. Decides to take it to the paint. Ray to Ingles to Kutu. Looks for the three. Doesn't take it. Ray in the, for three. is good. Don starting to pick up the pace now and realizing that they have to score if they want to get back in this game. As you've seen two threes and a couple of easy layups. You know, Don's, I mean, they just cut them out strong. They've been doing a great job of driving, attracting offenders, and then passing it out for easy shots. Looks like there's going to be an offensive foul on Loyola, and the Dons will retain the basketball. Kutu drives in, gets it to the post, gets double teamed. Someone's open. Ingles to Rhea, the pass. Leo comes up short, no foul called. Bishop takes it himself. No good with an aggressive play. And they take it back out. And timeout, a timeout will be called by Loyola as it looked like they were getting into a little bit of a situation there with a the loose ball. So we'll be back right after this timeout. We are back after the timeout. Just under three minutes left here to play. Loyola leads the, the Dons 25 to 18. There'll be an inbound play from Loyola. Engro trying to find somewhere to go in the paint. Gets the layup and is good. Very aggressive play there. Just a couple dribbles and puts it up himself. Gonna stay with the Dons as it was last touched by a Rambler. Kutu on the wing. Takes it to the right, step back, no shot. Looking for someone open, gets it poked away. Raya in the corner, out to Ingles, back to the corner. Taking it to the post. Ingles for three. It's good. Liam Ingles continues 
to stay on fire for the Dons here. Put up another three-pointer. There's a pass at the paint. So there's a good cut there for Mengro. Out to the wing, back to the post, and a kickball violation, but a good stop there from Notre Dame as there might have been a play under the basket if that pass was made. Engro to inbound it. Number 21, Loftus. Back out to the wing. Nowhere to go with it. Opposite wing, down into the post is Angro. Looks for Jimmy Tarjan in the post again. Back up to Loftus. A lot of passing around. Tarjan passes it out for three. It's good. Bishop with another three to put Loyola up by nine. 30 to 21 with a minute and 13 left here to go and a timeout will be taken. We are back here. Don starting to heat up a little bit. We see Ingles definitely a season high of eight points. And we've seen him finally shooting the ball, which is what I've kind of stressed in the past couple games is he's better than he thinks. He can shoot the ball. He just never attempts to. We are now back. The Dons need to get something going if they want to get back from this nine point deficit as there's Kutu down in the post. Gets double teamed. Ingles in the corner out to Raya. For three, it's good! Don't make me quote Stacey King, give me the hot sauce. Yeah, that's Ryder's second three. You know, and I think him coming in for Leo Frederigo is gonna see a lot more opportunities. Here's a three from Bolin for Loyola and he drains it again. As he is also having a night that is absolutely on fire. Ingles takes it himself to the rim. And out of nowhere, the Dons are starting to get back in in this one slowly. Because there's 10 seconds left. Engro on the wing. Bowling with it now, or sorry, Bishop with it now. Tries to take it himself and it's good. And one. Ball on Ryder Rea, and that'll put Oliver Bishop in the spot for a three-point play. I mean, we have seen Bishop all game just deliver for the Ramblers. Three-pointers, two-pointers, driving. Yeah, really, he's done it all this game. Half of a second left. Moselle tries it again, hits the rim. And at the end of the third quarter, the Dons are down by 10. We see them start to heat up a little bit, but we'll be back in the fourth quarter.
We are back. Fourth quarter is now underway. Eight minutes on the clock. I feel like these are going to be an intense eight minutes. Either Loyola decides to just keep keep doing what they're doing and shut the Dons down on defense, and then they they just run away with it, or the Dons have a little magic in them and force a comeback. So you see Loyola inbound it. We saw the third quarter, a lot of fireworks. <laughs> See Tarzan taking himself to the top of the key. Engro back out to Tarzan. As he gets tipped away to Bishop. A lot of passing around at the top of the key. Into the post. It's number 21. Loftus and it's going to be a jump ball. And it'll be going down. Don's ball after the jump ball. That was just a great effort there from Liam Ingles. Yeah. Getting his hands at the ball, holding on to it, getting the Don's in possession. So there's the stop the Don's needed if they want to start a comeback. Ryder for three. Close but missed. Two empty possessions from both teams. Or I should say one from each, two in total. Some Ramblers pass it down into the paint. The reverse layup is good for Mangro. It's kind of been the bread and butter of the whole game for the Ramblers. Just been getting passes into the paint. Then once they're in there, they're just doing work and getting points. So the Don's pa pass it around a little bit. Kutu drives in, got nowhere to go. Ingles for three. Looks like he might have got tipped. Maybe not. <laughs> That'll be going down. Ramblers ball. Lo Loyola up 38 to 26 here in the fourth quarter. As this is what I mentioned before, the Ramblers could just run away with it right here. They decide to really tap in for three. Just missed. Kutu with the rebound. Bishop missed that three. Pushing it up is Kutu. Takes it himself. The layup is good. Still a 10 point deficit for the Dons. But as I said earlier, slowly but surely making their way back in this one. Yeah, I mean, Dons dug themselves into the hole after the first, but they've just been slowly climbing out. We saw it especially in the third. So there's a missed shot from Loftus. Selhurst comes up with the rebound. Ingles pushing it up. A little shimmy shake at the top of the key. And has nowhere to go with it. Kutu on the wing. Raya at the top of the key. Drives in. Looks for help. And timeout will be called by the Dons. As there's a close play there. But there will be a timeout called. And we'll be back after the timeout. We are back after the Don's timeout. Loyola with three fouls, and D with two. Both teams staying out of foul trouble. The lob pass into Kutu. Rayo for three is good! Another three pointer from the sophomore Ryder Rayo. That puts the Dons within seven now, 31-38. Loyola still leading. 
and grew to Tarzan. To Bishop down low. Boland on the wing. An open shot. None taken though as it gets bobbled around. The three. A travel is called. Traveling violation on the Ramblers. Gives the Dons just a little bit more momentum to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, I mean, the Dons cut it down to seven now with possession. So you got four minutes, 30 seconds left in the fourth. Plenty of time for the Dons to make a move. As Ingles tries to push it around in the paint. Right to the pass. Ingles for three. Off the rim and a great, great rebound from Ryder Rea as he just came out of nowhere. And that's what we needed to see more of this entire game is just a little bit more hustle effort from everybody. Kutu into the post. Gets stopped and bobbles it a little bit. Out to the wing, Kutu tries to take it himself. He does, gets tipped. Nothing for Kutu. The drive is no good and no foul is called as Andy wasted a lot of time on that play for an empty possession. So just over three minutes and 40 seconds left here to go for the Ramblers. That's something that they're definitely gonna have to avoid. They cannot be taking that long on possessions, even if they are gonna get points off of it. You can't let Loyola get the ball and try and dribble the clock out. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're gonna do here is just pass it around at the top of the key. Out to the wing, a pass to the paint. Back out to the wing to Engro. Bishop at the top of the key. And he may have to start following soon just so that they can at least get a chance. Bishop to Tarjan, to Boland. It's now been close to a minute of Loyola having the ball. They're just passing it around still. They're in no rush to do anything. Still a lot of passing around, a couple open shots. Gets blocked. And a cross court pass is successful. And they're just gonna go back to their game which is passing it around. And he will have to foul soon as two minutes and 10 seconds are left here on the clock. More double teaming. Yeah, you can tell even when they're getting open shots, they're, they're just dribbling it. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the next two minutes, Loyola just keeps doing this. And a foul is called on Connor Moselle. Yeah, a lot of time wasted. I think that was about a minute and a half, maybe a little less. Looks like a timeout. Full timeout will be called. For Notre Dame, and we'll be back after the timeout also. Back after the timeout break. The Ramblers lead the Dons 38 to 31 with a minute and 51 
here left to play in the fourth quarter. So far, Loyola has just been passing the ball around. Just trying to find an easy play. It looked like there might have been a steal there from Kutu, but no one could come up with it. And a cross-court pass. And there's the foul again from Moselle. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of a lot of double teams, seeing if they can maybe get a steal, and then if those aren't working, we've now seen those all foul. Yeah, and they almost got it to work, too. There's a lot more pressure here. And the Don just can't find the steal. And there's a passing play for number two, Andrew Hollerich. So he gets a point in the paint. And he finally regains possession with a minute 20 left. They're gonna have to do something quickly. There's Rhea for three, it's good again! Ryder Rhea coming in for Leo Frederigo. Now with 12 points, all from three pointers. And the Dons end up with the steal. They're gonna need to hustle for this one. And Loyola comes up with it. 50 seconds left here to play. And there's a foul called. Now the only issue the Dons have to worry about is if you're getting the same guys continuing to foul, eventually they're gonna run into foul trouble and foul out. So you gotta get a variety of guys to foul. Yeah, you can't just have Moselle and Kutu who have been the two so far who have been following the most. There's a cross court pass. 40 seconds left and another foul is called. See Selhurst with the foul. And uh, it now will now be Next foul, sorry, will be one and one. There's a foul from Ingles there. Now it is a one and one chance. And that's kind of what Notre Dame needed because there is a chance. Free th first free throws missed and they get the ball back. They could push it quick. Only down six points with 40 seconds left. Yeah, if they get two quick three pointers here, tie it up, send it to overtime. Loyola will take a timeout now and so will we. We'll be back. We're back. The number 11, Miles Bolin, will be shooting the one and one for Loyola. Chance for Notre Dame, as we said before, down six, just under 40 seconds left. The first free throw is good. That was a big one right there. Puts him up by two scores, or by three scores, sorry. And now we see no Loyola Rambler in the paint for a rebound. They're also they're all just going to get back on defense, but it's not needed as Ingles takes it up. Looking for a pass anywhere. Can't find any. Takes it into the post. Looks for a foul and he gets it. Now we might see a little strategy here to get some more points. Do you, you know, do you try and intentionally miss the second one so it bounces back to you quick enough to put up a layup? It's definitely a possibility, but I do think that it's just 
too big of a deficit to even worry about missing the free throw yeah. in the first place. You know, you gotta you gotta at least make the free throw. Both free throws are good. So no foul is called until the very end. Looked like they might have whacked him a couple times before that, but the, the foul will sorry will be on Brady Selhurst, I believe. That'll put Engro back at the line. Still a one and one chance, but Dons are getting the foul trouble where it may become a double bonus at any point soon. First free throw is good. Ramblers lead 43 to 36 now with 21 seconds. And a timeout will be taking, taken by Loyola. The timeout ends. Engro still has one free throw in the one and one chance. Don's down by seven now. The so second free throw is good. Press from Loyola. Ingle drives past it and gets the foul call. That'll be taken out on the sideline. I think the idea Loyola might have is to foul them so that way they can't get three points. Three points. And another timeout will be called for Notre Dame. We're back as the Dons inbound the ball. 15 seconds left and a foul is called. So Dons will get another inbound play there. And the Kutu in the, in the post. And it looks like an offensive foul will be called. Loyola now has the ball under the hoop. And they're going to run the clock out now. And that will end the game. Loyola beats Notre Dame 44 to 36 after four quarters.
pretty slow in the first half. Picked up a little bit. Made it an intense game, but Don still lose by a total of eight points. Aiden, you got any final words before we head off? Uh, just a little recap. I mean, Don's came out really slow. And I think that came back to bite him in the end. They got really hot in the second half, but they definitely struggled in the first half, and that's going to come back to bite them. Yeah, just a slow start could change the entire course of the game. But for now, for Caden Frawley, for Aiden Nelson, for Danny Berg, our producer, everybody, I hope you have a great Christmas. Drive safe with the blizzard that is coming our way. We will see you guys on the next home game. For any information about the next games coming up that we will be streaming, check our Twitter page, check our website. We have all of our information there. But for now, signing off, have a great Christmas and good night.